This is Michaela McLean, and you're listening to Beauty by Design. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. We've got another gate to discuss. We're going to get into gate 35, but before we do that, just want to remind you, um, I have my course, Your Energetic Marketing Guide, or what I am now calling Human Design 101 for Estheticians, Health, Wellness Professionals, um, you know, the AKA name for that. If you want to learn human design, you want to learn the foundations um, to really understand it, that's the place you got to go. If you're not ready to go all the way in, um, of course, there's the $11 or type classes, you know, run your chart. You can go sign up for my free guide. It's beautiful. It's been redesigned. Find out what type you are, get the appropriate $11 class. They're one hour and watch it. It's going to help make everything make way more sense. Um, and then if you decide you're going to, you know, go do the course, all of those classes are actually inside of my course, your energetic marketing guide. So um, that is hours on hours on hours of content. It also um, comes with keyword guide and basically a way to to understand how to navigate the podcast because it's basically like all the information is here for you. Uh, I always say it's like I'm a line one. I've before one, you know, I've been building like a resource library for people. Um, so there's just like all kinds of things coming together with it. So um, that's that's where to get started, of course, is just go get the free guide and see see where it takes you. Uh, then we have my yoga nidras. More are coming, more on the way. Just had recently released one with Little Fox, a new one for the Jet Lag collection. Uh, again, more coming with Little Fox. I was on a call today and I'm so excited. There's oh, there's so many cool things coming with the brand that people are just not ready for. Um, they just, the, the, the brand itself is doing things again that nobody else is doing. Like who else offers Yoga Nidra as part of like their, their brand and their protocols, right? Um, so anyway, Stay tuned. There's a lot of launches coming this year. Of course, I will I will clue you in on those. But God, there's some things coming very soon that I'm just so excited about. Um, yeah. So I think that's it. I think that's it. That's good. That's good. We'll we'll leave it there for now. Um again, I'm just back from my trip and I'm I'm kind of like collecting myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't recorded a podcast in like a week. So <laughs> it's like Oh my god, are we right now? Um yeah. Oh, oh, actually, okay. Real fast. Las Vegas trip is coming up in a couple of weeks. So Golden Experience Guide will be there um in Las Vegas. That's you know, running running alongside like the convention. Um going to be speaking at that there's a pool party if you're interested you know of course go check out golden experience guide and you'll find all the details everything you need if you're going to be in vegas for the convention anyway make sure you come over and and hang out at the event at the house i say house the mansion um pool party i'm a i'm a water baby I'm, I'm excited about that and then of course the setting next is coming up but the reason why that's on my mind both of those things is like i have lectures and slides and um my workshop all kinds of things cool stuff you if you're in aesthetics make sure that you're make sure that you're coming to those aesthetic next is like definitely the place to be um yeah so anyway we're gonna get on with it of course you can go find everything you need on instagram at michaela mclean you may follow over there. Let's get on to the episode. I'm I'm just tangenting all over the place. So of course, my reminder, my disclaimer, don't try to understand all of this at the mental level. Let the sound current, the energy, the frequency of beauty sink into your cells like good skincare. So today the sun moves into Gemini gate 35 in human design, which is a 
gate that's located in the throat center. It's part of the collective sensing abstract circuitry. So this is the more yin, you know, side of the chart that's yin, feminine, experiential, intuitive, receptive. Um, it's the side that's definitely focused on reflecting, reflecting on and making sense of the past. So, you know, like to say that's been there, done that, got the t-shirt, what's next? You know, or hindsight is 2020, any of that type of any of that type of thing. Um, and definitely when it comes to this gate specifically. So always with, you know, the key, the keynote with any of the collective circuitry is like sharing, you're sharing anything you're learning for the betterment of everyone. So starting with the center itself, this is, like I said, it's the throat center, it's the energy center for communication, self-expression and manifestation. All energy in the chart is trying to make it to the throat to have something done about it. Like this is, this is the final destination. So gate 35 is known as progress. It's the gate of change. And the keynote here is I experience or I feel or not. It's progress through experience. And I always think of this as very line three kind of vibes, you know, um, because it's really just, yeah, I got to experience it to know. So the low expression of gate 35 is that it's an energy that's always restless and looking for the next new experience. Um, often it, it's one and done, you know, and that's not a bad thing, but depends on how you use it. It's interesting to look, you know, just going back one gate prior to gate 16, 35 is its mirror image if you folded the chart in half. So same spot on the other side of the chart, but it's part of, but that one, 16 is part of the logic circuitry of the, of the collective. So that's about repetition to master specific skills, right? 35 just wants to like gain the experiential wisdom. Again, to repeat myself, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, you know, it's an insatiable hunger for what's next, what's new, what else can I try? And it can have a really difficult time tolerating boredom, right? It was truly always hungry for more, looking for stimulation, not sitting with those feelings. Um, we'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute, but it's like skirting the surface, you know, 16, as I was just talking about, is like 16 is also more on the surface, you know, it's like, I have the, the skills, I have the talent, you know, and its partner, 48, is the one that gives it depth. Just like in this case, again, we're folding the chart in half. We're looking at the 36. Like that's giving 35 the emotional depth. So when we're up here on the surface, you know, it's like we're, we're maybe lacking some of the depth that would help um, help give all of this meaning. So it can show up as incorrectly entering into new experiences, you know, not using your strategy and authority to, to determine what is correct for you. So it can lead to jumping into so many things without consideration for the ramifications of your actions. It can be incredibly impulsive. It just wants to feel good, have fun, take others along for the ride. Uh, very much about instant gratification as well. You know, like I said, diving into things without clarity and then wondering why you keep re repeating low vibrational cycles. So this is also part of an emotional wave channel. One that is built on high, high, high hopes and great expectations. Um, and when it's not managed well, it can really lead to disappointment when those expectations go unfulfilled. So the high expression here is being very intentional about making that progress or achieving change through experience. And then, of course, talking or sharing about it. Other people learn and benefit just by hearing stories, your stories. You know, you did it so others don't have to. And the key here is to be open to anything and everything life has to offer. You know, this gate is always up for an adventure, but you need to approach each adventure objectively and with your expectations managed. Once again, <laughs> um, you've, you have and collect the experience and then reflect on it and share the wisdom that you've gained. So when it comes to the gene keys, the shadow of this one is hunger. The gift is adventure and the city is boundlessness. So Richard Rudd says, there is perpetual and innate hunger built into all human beings. The classic translation for this 35th hexagram of the I Ching is the word progress, which is very apt since the 35th gene key drives all human progress. 
At the shadow frequency, progress is expressed as outer evolutionary progress. True progress, however, has little to do with physical manifestations and everything to do with the progress of human awareness. In a nutshell, what the 35th shadow does is divert true progress out into the world of form. Thus, because of this shadow, the outer world evolves at the expense of the inner. He goes on to say the 35th gene key is connected to the secretion of serotonin within the body. Serotonin is well known as a chemical that induces states of satiation and deep fulfillment. He says at the shadow frequency, serotonin production within the body is inhibited, leaving human beings with a perpetual feeling of hunger. This deep unrest within the human body drives human beings out into the world to try to find something that can bring an end to what is essentially genetic hunger. This hunger drives all human experience. However, no matter how you try to satiate your hunger in the outer world, it will never be enough. No external crutch or method can ever replace the natural balanced chemistry of your own body. And he says of the gift, to live with an open heart is to live in a perpetual state of adventure. Adventure means that there is still some fear inside of you, but you've reached a frequency that you know is high enough to outwith that fear. Every human being has the choice to take a path of love. When you give to another unconditionally, you actually stimulate the secretion of serotonin. This not only makes you feel happy, but also induces a deep state of trust that you are in harmony with the entire universe. The 35th key is the only place in the entire 64 gene keys where a human being can actually do something conscientiously to raise their frequency. They can embark on the adventure of love and catalyze a genetic speeding up of their own evolution. If you happen to be reading this 35th gene key, then you have stumbled upon the greatest single secret hidden within all human DNA. In a book filled with secrets, you have found the simplest and easiest. Indeed, certain translations of the original I Ching have named this 35th hexagram easy progress as opposed to just progress. The easiest and quickest way to change your life for the better is to give your love unconditionally in as many areas of your life as you dare. Okay, so my notes here, this is part of an emotionally manifested channel. So this is an emotional wave and it's one that's all about informing because it is manifested. So with this timing is everything. Um, this is the collective voice of suffering pain sadness but also of compassion empathy and love you know again this too shall pass um of course if you're not a manifester and you do have gate 35 you just still want to make sure that you're following your own strategy and authority that's always the golden rule in human design and so you know of course 35 it's this desire for a new experience a new feeling but it needs to manage expectations um, wearing rose colored glasses and then falling off the cliff needing to be scraped up off the ground <laughs> you know over and over and over this wave is the hope to pain expectation and disappointment joy to despair and back again and of course transcending this is the key to making it to just you know surviving this this entire wave here and it's a waiting game because it's a never-ending cycle you know you have to release attachment to the outcome this channel that we will talk about is all about the journey and not the destination and it's also interesting to really look at the whole rim of this side of the chart you know really it's this is a creative channel and the energy begins in the root so it really begins with gate 41 moves up to gate 30 gate 36 and then is expressed in gate 35 so it's going from inexperience to experience and it's inspired by the fantasy there's that 41 it's the human experience there are 36 and it's sharing the wisdom learned you know and again that's kind of comes back to why i was saying it feels very line three to me um the really important thing of course is the need to wait for clarity you know it's like is this an experience i really want to have um and of course because this connects to 36 in the emotional solar plexus you know so nervous system calming is always important when the emotional solar plexus is involved. Of course it is with this entire channel. Um, if you have that entire channel, you know, you want to just make sure that you are clear. 
like waiting for clarity is very important. Um, that emotional nervousness or anxiousness is is basically telling you that it's like you haven't hit neutral clarity yet. So you have not waited the wave out. Okay, we will talk more about that when we get to the channel partner. And but let's move on to the programming partner. So, of course, the sun is in gate 35, the earth is automatically opposite in gate five. That's Sagittarius. So Gemini Sagittarius partnership here. And gate five is known as waiting. It's the gate of fixed patterns. It's the energy to set and repeat patterns, habits, and rituals in order to ensure a consistent flow. And it's also known as patience in the I Ching. So five is all about the comfort and security of knowing what comes day in and day out. Spring follows winter. The sun rises each morning and sets each e evening. Um, waking up, morning meditation, a walk, having coffee, you know, what time do you have your lunch? Like all of those things. Um, you know, five can be a little bit rigid with routines. <laughs> so, or or feel like it needs to impose its structure on other people. Or, you know, it can also be about disregarding your need for routines to basically, you know, kind of suit other people, which can leave the person with gate five a little lost and destabilized. But the high expression here, trusting your innate sense of good timing, which is connected to nature cycles. Um, we are a part of nature, of course, you know, honoring your routines because they help to anchor you and stabilize your vibration and listen to your inner rhythm, you know, dancing with it instead of denying it. Now, when it comes to the gate that completes the channel, we have Pisces gate 36 forming the channel of transitoriness. So gate 36 is known as the darkening of the light. It's the gate of crisis. And this one carries that emotional fear and anxiety of inadequacy. And it is driven by the hunger to have the challenge of a new experience, nervousness about one's basically inadequacy. And <laughs> um, these are people who are meant to grow through what they go through, specifically deep emotional experiences. Um, I'm going to stop right there and just say, you know, you can always go back, listen to the gate 36 episode. This is my sun gate, my Pisces sun. Um, I apologize if you are interested in going and listening to it because I cried multiple times in that episode because it is a very uh, emotional gate, but um, we're, we're just going to give the brief, the brief run down here because I just don't feel like going today. <laughs> Um, you know, like I said, it's a fear of a fear of inadequacy, being vulnerable, emotional turbulence, suffering, being crisis prone, being a magnet for the sad stuff, um, debilitating nervousness and anxiety, big overwhelming feelings, just getting sucked into like the you know the undertow of emotions. Um, but the positive side of it is learning to sit with that vast spectrum of feelings and you know understand that it's transitory allowing the intensity to move through you but not cling on to it and embracing those highs and lows well again just like i said with 35 managing the expectations um so much depth so much emotional depth with this gate uh but it's like it takes time and experience you know to understand like oh i i've done this and i've gone through hard stuff essentially to help share that with others and and help them through as well you know and so like i said my my sun gate it, which is your most significant placement in your chart 70 percent of your neutrino imprintation comes from it um and yeah you just you know it's like it's a whole thing <laughs> So anyway, 36 is the emotional solar plexus center connecting to the throat center for the expression of those deep emotions, right? Everything that's coming from that 36, those deep emotional experiences, the feelings, um, and informing how you feel, what your experience has been. Um, again, this is a manifested channel. So manifest your anger lives in this channel, uh, lack of clarity and not informing can really can really um stir up some of that anger and manifestors now also a little note if you have the full channel you depending on what else you have you would either have to be a manifester or if the sacral is also defined in the chart that would make you a manifesting generator that's the only way you're going to be able to have this full channel is one of those two types 
Okay, so anyway, when the two come together to form the channel of transitoriness, um, this channel is known as the jack of all trades. It's multi-talented. It's a creative channel. Um, it's the wisdom that changes the only constant. You know, it's about seeking out new experiences and amassing the lived wisdom through it, which gives them incredible depth of character. You know, it's not about focusing on the outcome, really living life as that journey versus the destination. So this is an experiential storyteller. Uh, it's a historian channel as well, you know, and definitely about, like I said, the been there, done that thing. I don't need to continually repeat something. I'm not trying to perfect it like the logic, the collective logic circuitry. This is like, I had the experience. This is what I derived from it. Um, and again, can be a very emotionally volatile, uh, volatile when reality does not meet their expectations. So again, just stressing, like if you have the whole thing, you need to wait out the wave. This one really builds up big and crashes. It also crashes big. Um, again, the channel's literally transitoriness. You know, I, I'm always, I have half of it, right? My biggest energy. What do I do? I talk about the transits. That's what I'm doing this whole time is like all the things that are forever changing around us, everything that's being ephemeral. Um, nothing stays the same forever. It's always shifting, rearranging, and basically learning, learning to get comfortable with that. You know, people don't like change, but the sooner that you sort of accept it, the easier everything gets and you are managing your expectation. It's silly, right? It's silly to have the expectation that things are not going to change. So when you come around to that, you're like, oh, I can, I can relax and just try to enjoy life. So astrologically, this channel would be a Gemini Pisces square. Um, and of course, so it's a mutable square. So it's mutable is really about essentially it's, it's flowing from one season into the next. So this is this channel to me is like learning to go with the flow of life. And of course, squares bring friction for the sake of growth. So again, this is a, a, emotional growth. All right. And the quarter of the wheel that gate 35 is in is the second quarter, quarter of civilization, purpose fulfilled through form. So this is bringing spirit into form. And that's like literally spirit awareness that is that lives in the emotional solar plexus being brought to the throat to take form. Um and I find it interesting as well because, like my friend, um, you know, I said I have the thirty-six on me. I have the partner, my friend Alex Sands, the energetic facialist, skin craft. She, her son is in gate thirty-five, and you know, it's so fascinating because I'm like, she's a really great example of when somebody talks about, you know, their experience. Um, just she gets so it just gets such a good response and it's so interesting to me um just to again i'm always observing these things in my people in my life family friends you know and, and just like wow it's it's so i don't know it's wild because you're just like there's no way this isn't real <laughs> you know what i mean um anyway do you have this gate in your chart? You're going to look at the throat. It's on the right hand side, aiming down toward the 36 little triangle down there on the, on the side. Um, if it's black, red, or red and black, that means you have it defined. Some planet or sensitive point is sitting there activating that particular gate. But if you don't have it like me, 35 is white, but you look down to the 36 and mine is colored in. It's colored in black. And so that means something, right? So in my case, I'm going to have that full channel for approximately six days. So again, you know, you can, it's like, wow, that's so interesting. Or you may not have any of it, right? But, but guess what? <laughs> I'm like, do we talk about the bigger thing? Um, Neptune is and has been and will continue to sit in gate 36 for a hot minute. And that means everybody temporarily. For approximately six days is getting this entire channel so um it's just so fascinating to observe how you experience it through the transits through other people in your life um you know even if you don't have it you have experience with this so everybody can learn something from it and that's really what this 35 is about is that collective learning the wisdom the experience okay so and i'm always curious if you have it you can always hit me up on instagram and let me know all right, I'll be back soon with more. 
If this episode was valuable to you, I would love it if you would leave it a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcast or wherever you listen. It just helps. Um, it helps get the show out to more people who would be interested in it. And if you would like to learn more human design, of course, free guide. Start there. That'll take you to your correct $11 uh, one-hour class. You can always do my energetic marketing guide course, the big one, if you really are interested in it again. It's called that, but truly, you're learning human design and, and it really could be applicable to anyone. Um, there's just certain things that definitely aren't geared toward aesthetics and using it to boost yourself, you know, energetically in your business. But it also comes with a special meditation and a yoga nidra, and like I said, all the guides and, and cool things to kind of like help you synthesize all the information. So, of course, check that out. All kinds of new things coming in the very near future. God, there's so much I'm so excited to talk about, <laughs> K35. Um, but we're going to keep a lid on it for now. But um, yeah, trainings, especially, especially, especially for my aesthetics professionals. Um, and of course, health and wellness people too, but girl, buckle up. It's going to get really cool. Okay. Follow me over on Instagram at Michaela McLean. And of course, until next time, have a beautiful day. <laughs>